Welcome back to Adventures in Reach. Behind me is a DIY Ninja Warriors rope obstacle course. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to make one of those that's within reach where you don't have to pay $150 to $200 a piece. So stick with me and I'll show you the process. So this can be a gift or to make to have at your own house. And I'm gonna show you the materials and the process, all the knots so that you can make one on your own. Now I did say it's in reach because it's affordable. This whole setup, actually I made two of them for $70 instead of paying the normal $150 to $200 for one. So uh, let's go through it. I'm gonna show you all of the obstacles that I have. First is the rope ladder. You need some way to get up and so the, you know, a kid can, or yourself can climb from the, the base. And then we have these kind of, um, you know, the more stable kind of monkey bar. And then there's this, you know, this kind of spinning monkey bar. Um, another stable one. And you can do these in whatever order you want. And the beauty here is with these Prusik knots, uh, you can actually slide these things, and so if you want them close together, you have a smaller, uh, you know, younger child, then you can certainly do that. If you want to spread them out, make it more difficult, or, you know, have it kind of get more difficult as they age, uh, you can do that as well. So this one here, I have another, uh, kind of like the ladder, just spread out. And then there's a swing sort of thing here. Uh, so they kind of have to figure out, do they sit on it, stand on it? Okay. And we've got this little tubing hold. All right, another um, kind of funky little thing to stand on. Again, different varying heights just to mix it up. Another very sure hold here. And then we get into this, these ball holds. And, you know, just a piece of rope to kind of uh, balance on as they hang on to the balls. A uh, couple other options for you is you can do... Uh, like a piece of plywood. I'm not going to do this because I don't want to ship a piece of plywood, obviously, but you know, an old piece of plywood or a, a partial, right? You cut out some random holds. Um, you, you hang a couple of those in a row and there you have another one, you know, another um, different types of, of balls. Um, you can, you know, take like a, a, a pipe or a, a dowel that's longer and maybe they have to hold on to that. Uh, you can string a rope on the bottom of this that they can kind of walk on. Um, there, there can be a variety of things. And uh, you can also, you know, if you want to have underneath this, you know, those ramps where you like jump back and forth to or, or a balance beam or something. So maybe they, they do some of these holds to get to something on the ground and do that, get back on. So just use your creativity to really kind of expand this thing. All right, so now I'm going to show you uh, the tightening. So with the rope here, I, I just tighten this with, you know, I, I just kind of like a trucker's hitch here, or you can do, you know, a butterfly or something. And then I just pulled it back and, you know, did a couple half hitches. Now this isn't ideal. Uh, ideally you would have like a, a ratchet strap around the tree and then, you know, a, you know, a, a loop here, um, probably with a butterfly hitch, and then you just ratchet it, pull it to the tree to tighten. Um, you could uh, use like a come along, you could use some ropes and pulleys. Uh, you could get a bunch of people to pull on it and just pull in the slack. Um, any of those methods should work. Uh, so the materials here. First material obviously is the rope. Now you probably could do this with a piece of webbing or a cable. Now a cable would certainly change this up in terms of knots and all that. You'd probably be using cable to, you know, hang down as well um, to attach the different obstacles, but I think it would work just fine. Um, so a couple other things here. We obviously, we have this uh, cordage, okay. Uh, another, you know, piece of rope, uh, some baseballs, you drill some holes through. The baseballs work better than the tennis balls, but these do work. This is just some old tubing uh, that I just had laying around, wasn't using it for anything. Uh, a piece of conduit. Uh, you could use a dowel rod here. And then this guy is just, you know, a, a piece of decking, right? So that's, that's what I used, and I'm sure you could use different things, be creative. For example, with these holds, the balls, you could use like some 
a, a dog Kong right here, it's going to be the same thing. You just need something round to hold on to. Um, and again, I just had a lot of this stuff sitting around and, you know, the, these, uh, conduits, this was a, a project I had, maybe you saw in a previous video that I have uh, an escape room and was building a jail cell and the bars of the cell were made out of, uh, these conduit pieces. And I just had some extra lengths there. And so I just, uh, went ahead and used those. If you have some other ideas for um, obstacles to add, maybe a tire or something, whatever you come up with, I would love to hear it. Uh, you know, put that in the comments uh, so that other people that are making these have as many ideas as possible. So let's really uh, pack those comments with other obstacle ideas that you can hang on a rope or cable or whatnot. And uh, let's, uh, let's make some really cool obstacle courses out there. All right, so I'm inside now and I'm going to show you kind of how to build everything that you saw outside. And this is probably gonna be more simple than you think. Uh, and so first of all, I forgot to mention about the rope. Now I personally like to use rated equipment. Um, you know, I have access to it. This is an old climbing rope. You know, this is an 11 millimeter rated to about 9,000 pounds. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be well within an overkill for having three kids bounce in the middle where it multiplies the weight uh, towards the anchors and on the rope. Uh, you, you could probably do fine with uh, a, a rope from a you know, hardware store or something. Uh, just look at the ratings, try to find those, and you know, if not, you know, look at least with the material that it's made from and see if you can check online for kind of what those approximate ratings are going to be. Now, remember, you're not going to be hanging this, uh, you know, 100 feet in the air. This is not a life safety line. This is a toy. And, you know, they're going to be hanging a couple feet above the ground. So try to uh, get something strong enough. Uh, you know, webbing, if you use that, if you can find that cheaper, is rated about 4,000 pounds for a single strand of one inch tubular or, or one inch sewn tubular and uh, you know cable that's all marked um, ratings on those. So anyway uh, that's what I have for the rope. So before we start here I want to talk about the tools real quick. Um, a couple power tools. I use the drill to uh, get the holes through the balls and you know especially the baseballs and then the sawzall for uh, cutting these um, tubes at different lengths, the conduit. Aside from that, it's pretty simple. Uh, tape measure and a marker for marking out the lengths to cut these. Uh, a knife, a lighter, and gloves for cutting, melting, and uh, kind of shaping the, the melted ends of the ropes that you're going to be cutting. There's going to be a bunch of that. So the knots on this are really going to be pretty repetitive. And I'm going to show you the knots that I use, and I'll give you a couple ideas of, of knots that you could use instead if you already know them or are more comfortable with them. So first thing, that loop of rope um, that had the baseballs hanging above it, uh, that I tied the, the main rope that they're standing on to this cordage with a double fisherman's. You could use a sheet bend, but it's, it's harder to to make it stay nice and tight when it's not weighted. And so that's why I went with the double fisherman's. So a double fisherman's essentially, you're going to do the same thing twice. And you're going to see that this motion is repeated through many of the knots that we're doing today. So double fisherman's, you're going to go around the, the cordage, okay? And you're gonna make this little fish looking thing. You're gonna go around again and on your second time around, you're going to, you're creating this X, okay, where the the uh, body and the tail of the fish um, are separated, and you're going to go under that that X and through the little loop, okay, and you're pulling that tight, and when you pull that tight, you kind of have this little X here, okay, and and that is half of the double fisherman's. Now. You could tie it the you know opposite way and try to get it perfectly correct, but the easiest way to do this is just spin the thing around 
and do the exact same motion on the other side with the other rope. Okay, and now when you pull these together or put them close, uh, they should look the same. So this upper, um, upper part of the X should also be in the same place here, which they are. And again, these are used for tying same or different diameter ropes together. And so you pull that tight and that's it. So that is uh, one half or, you know, one end of that loop of rope. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you need more of an explanation on any of these knots, then I should have links to all these knots, I believe, uh, in the description. So check the description for other knot videos. And if you have a question on one or need a, a different video, if I forgot one, then feel free to comment and I will try to get to that right away. So really to, to tie all of this, I essentially used about four knots. Actually five, because I think I used a figure eight. So a Prusik, uh, we're gonna use a Prusik, we're gonna use a Bolin with a Yosemite finish. We're going to use a double overhand stopper knot, a double Fisherman's, which is essentially the same thing as that stopper, and that figure eight. So many of the things are going to be tied in the same way. So I'm gonna show you how to tie the ball on, and I'll point out all the other ones that are done the same way. So first, we're going to put that stopper knot at the end. So a double or triple overhand, overhand stopper. So what I do is I put my finger here and I wrap around my finger. So I'm, start, I'm going kind of towards the tip and then towards the hand. Again, that, that fit, we're making that fish shape, coming around again and going under that X. Okay, so that's a double overhand stopper. Now you can do this, okay, so that would be double going under. If you go around a, another time, that's going to be a triple overhand stopper, okay? And, and that's the difference there. So it has the two uh, crosses on top of the X. So it's not necessary. Now when we do rescue, we always joke like, you know, the taller the cliff, the more wrap. So you do a, you know, a, a quadruple overhand stopper, right? You know, for, cause that's a, that's a big cliff, right? So we're just, we're just gonna do a, a double here. And so, that is sufficient, right? I leave a little bit of a tail so that if this moves at all, but not a huge concern, okay? So we pull that tight and just creates a little kind of barrel there, okay? And then we're going to put the tennis ball down on top of this, okay? Now we need a loop here to tie our Prusik with. So what I've been doing for this is I, I tie a bowline, okay? So I'm gonna show you the, the easiest, you know, kind of beginner way of, you know, you make the little, the loop and you have this tree, you know, the ball part is kind of near the tree, comes up underneath the ground. You go around this thing with the rabbit, you know, out of the hole, around the tree, down the hole is a little saying, okay? And then for the Yosemite finish, we're going Kind of down and through the knot, the, the loop of the knot, and then we're going up this empty space in the back. And that, so that's an inside bowline, and the Yosemite finish is appropriate for an inside bowline, not an outside bowline. There is a difference there. So if you tie it the way I just showed, or check the links on the, you know, for the other videos, then you'll see the appropriate way to tie that. So now we have this baseball with a loop to tie a Prusik. Now, for our Prusik, what we're going to do here is we're going to put this, this loop on the back of the, the rope, and then we're going to wrap the ball through the loop. And we're going to do it twice or three times, like two or three times, and that's gonna be good. So with this, because it's limited space, you know, it's only gonna be twice, not a big deal. Again, when we talk about, you know, uh, climbing a rescue, you really want to match the number of turns with the diameter of the uh, cordage and, and rope. But in this instance, either way is going to keep this thing from sliding sideways as they're swinging on it. And it's going to enable you to move this thing to adjust the distance 
uh, between each obstacle, as I mentioned, outside. So that is how you tie a ball. Now, this piece is about, in, you know, about two and a half feet long, so it takes a lot of rope here to do these. Okay, so now that you learned how to tie this with putting the ball on there, you've learned a bunch of other obstacles too. You've learned how to tie this T, and there were three different lengths of these T's. So it's the same thing. It's the stopper on the bottom, and it's a bowlin with a Yosemite finish and a prussic around the rope. So you learned that, you learned you know, the longer ones, and you also learned how to tie this little disc swing seat. Uh, so th those are all the same. So literally, like more than half of the things on here, you know how to tie now. So I told you this would be simple, right? In reach. <laughs> okay, so the next one here is this, this very, you know, sure kind of tubing hold. And for this, really it's the same thing um, in that we're going to tie a bowl in twice. And so what I did for this, the kind of the awkward part of this is you're trying to hold this tubing closed as you're tying this knot, okay? So you kind of hold this closed, you know, so you're putting tension on it, you know, at whatever shape you want it to be, you know, so that's going to pull up like that. And now we want to tie as close as we can get to this knot to do another bowl in with Yosemite finish. And that'll give us our loop for the Prusik once again. Yeah, so really, I mean, as you can see, it was one knot to tie this. And so again, now you can do, uh, well, I guess this is just for the tubing. So you've got the ball, the tubing, the, all the T-grips, and you have that, that loop of rope. So the only things we have left are these little uh, hanging monkey bars and the ladders. So I'm going to show you the hanging monkey bars and then I'll kind of explain the ladder. Okay, so, so next I'm going to just show you this. This is that um, kind of that, that monkey bar grip and all you're going to do for this, you can see, you know, we've got uh, about four, almost five feet of rope here. You figure about six inches for each knot. <laughs> Imagine that, right? So this is actually, uh, this is probably about 10 inches here. And these are, these are probably actually about five inches. And then you've got six inches here and then a couple feet for each leg. So, um, yeah, so this is actually probably almost six feet, five and a half feet, right? So you're going to do that same double or triple overhand stopper where you're doing this, right? And that's going to get you these here, okay? And then you can either tie this, that double fisherman's that I first showed you, except now it's just with the same uh, diameter and it's going to end up looking like that. So with those, those crosses on top of the X that are going the same direction. And then, so you can tie that before or after the figure eight. So this is a figure eight on a bite, so which just means that uh, this figure eight is going to be doubled up. And so we're going to kind of pinch this off and spin around. And it's literally like, I mean, think basically everybody knows an overhand knot, like the simplest knot you can do. And so this is just one more twist. Okay. And again, check the links. And you're going to pull everything through and you're going to get something that kind of looks messy and probably off center like that. Okay. So we're going to try to get it so it's kind of centered and I just kind of pinch right here and then I work everything through. And then with these figure eights, you kind of want to set and dress. Now, now this one, it happened to be to be dressed. So dressed means that it's looking pretty and all of these strands are really taking the shortest route. Now again, what's, what's great about figure eights is that if you tied it in the right manner, but it, it, is not, it is not dressed, it is still going to be just as strong. So that's the cool thing about figure eights. And then we're going, we can set this where we kind of pull each strand and now we're set to do our prusik around the rope. So now we've got that, all of those done. 
So the only thing we have left is the ladder and then essentially the ladder would just had a bottom and a top rung. Now I did these a couple different ways and I think that the best way was actually to kind of measure it out like I said. So I did a foot in between six inches for a knot and I started in the middle okay and I I just kind of went down, I, I tied a knot, I went down, tied this knot, went down, you know, or put the put this um, pipe on, tied a knot, go down, put the pipe on, tie a knot a foot away from the other bar, put a pipe on, go down a foot, tie a knot, and keep doing that all the way down each leg. And then you kind of have to even them out, right? So this one, you know, it's like this, and you kind of just adjust it a little bit and get all of these even and parallel with each other and then you might have a little extra on the bottom which is just fine I think I had like four inches where it didn't figure quite right that was the easiest to just kind of go through and and do that um, you can also start from the bottom and then go up and tie up and tie up and tie you have to um, bring a lot more through that way um, but I, I think just like I said, a foot in between, six inches for the knots. You can certainly do your steps smaller than that too if you want. Um, but that is that is literally it. You know the figure eight, you know the double overhand stopper, and that's all you need for this. So it looks complicated uh, and takes a little bit more brain power, but uh, maybe save this for last and, and it, it really probably won't be as difficult as you're thinking. Um, again, if, if you need more explanation on this, then let me know in the comments and I can make another video specifically for these, um, but uh, I don't want to make this video go too long. All right, if you've enjoyed this video and you think uh, learning how to make this stuff and build a Ninja Warrior ropes course for someone in your life uh, has been helpful, then don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. So if you're not familiar, I do a lot of videos on kind of outdoor things that um, really are, are getting you to use uh, equipment and, and stuff that you may have in a way that really expands that use and that adventure. So uh, I hope you kind of join and uh, come along for future adventures. Uh, also, if you if you're interested in in ropes and, and adventures kind of using ropes then uh, check out the the playlist that you see on your screen now also if you're interested you can check out my teespring shirts and there will be a link in the description and i just ordered my don't be a square knot for don't be a square shirt uh, i'll show that to you when i get it but uh, i'm pretty excited about that and uh, don't be a square and order one yourself. All right, we'll see you next time.